Hi everyone. So we often get asked um, by people we work with what to do when we are caught up in in the thick of a thought storm and when we are we've got our head in a fog and we are just so all consumed by what is going on in our head that we aren't even kind of conscious of what's going on around us or even the fact that we are caught up in that in that fog and one of the things that we've kind of been exploring recently we've both been doing a mindfulness course and we want to talk a bit about the power of taking a pause because it can be it can be so incredibly difficult when we're in that situation and we're so caught up and the whole na by 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 nature of kind of being caught up you don't you don't know you are <laughs> so so actually this idea of taking a pause it really helps to it's almost like dropping out of this fog yeah. and then being able to look back up at it and then just Decide what to do next, which direction we want to go in. And I think, well, certainly I have found this doing a bit of mindfulness, which I have been slightly resistant to in the past. I kind of call myself a bit of a, um, a reluctant um, or an impatient meditator. Um, but I found it really helpful. And this, this idea of the pause, I think, has kind of come out of that. And I've I've certainly found that really helpful when I've started to get caught up that when I start to feel some of those spiky emotions some of those spiky feelings worry anxiety restlessness unworthiness um, all of those uh, kind of feelings that using that as a bit of a guide or as a bit of a, a warning sign to indicate that maybe my there may be something fishy is going on in my head and so then being able to take that pause and decide what to do next yes yes to all of that um the what was coming up for me as well is that kind of that time out it gives us it gives us that momentary kind of yeah pause breath however we want to word it, just to regroup somehow, doesn't it? That we can then, as you say, look back or look just, just it's almost like pressing the pause button on music or whatever, a recording, so that you can almost, well, in fact, on some of the meditations, when I'm listening to it a second time around because I want to make notes on it, is to press the pause button to actually hear it again in my own mind so for us maybe that's something that we can do is we're going off on that you know kind of thought storm as B talks about and what if taking a pause just allows us to almost hear again where we're going with that conversation or monologue in our heads and go hmm is this helpful and it might, it, you know, it's not to kind of have another conversation, but to actually just take that breath to allow us to regroup in a way. Mm. And then, as B said, to choose which direction to go in. And I think it's, I mean, it's helpful in day to day life before, you know, it might be that somebody's sent you a text or an email that you're really angry about. And it's like you're firing off a response before you've even had chance to think. And it's what if you took a pause just before you press that send button? Mm. And, yeah. and how different the outcome might be as a result of that. Sure, you may still decide to press, press send afterwards, but you've given yourself permission to just stop a moment. Mm. I think this isn't this we're not talking about a pause to then go and overthink something <laughs> because that is 
uh, that tends to be quite unhelpful. But this is more about, I guess, interrupting the autopilot mode that we're often in. And I certainly um, was in that a lot when I had my eating disorder, when I had, uh, when I was going through a really bad period of anxiety, that I would just be in this loop. And it's like I would, a familiar thought would come in, I would then uh, kind of grab hold of that and start to interrogate that. And then that would make me feel something. And then I might go and do something as my coping strategy to try and get rid of it or numb it. And it would just go round and round and round and it would spiral. And then half an hour later, I would be right at the bottom of a rabbit hole, kind of not knowing what's going on and just feeling completely frazzled. So this idea of the pause, it's, it's acting as a bit of a circuit breaker and allowing us to just become conscious really, because so much of this um, autopilot mode is done, well, it's done automatically. So it's a lot of it is unconscious. So if we, if we become more used to checking in with how we're feeling and, no, and seeing those feelings as a helpful tool to alert ourselves to when we actually need to, might need to take a pause, then that can be that can be incredibly helpful, incredibly helpful way of just interrupting that that cycle, which can so easily and quickly get away from us, can't it? Yeah. Oh gosh, so so easily. Um, and I love I love these words. It's a pause. It's a breath. It's a circuit breaker. It's it's an interrupter. And I love that that it kind of just just. I don't know why I'm doing that, but it feels that that's what it does in a way. It kind of unsettles us mm -hmm. to, to rebalance us in some way. Mm -hmm. And I, what came to mind as well was listening to Tara Brack, who's one of my favorite meditation teachers, mindfulness teachers. And she talks about being in a trance of unworthiness. And, and I think that this is relevant here as well, because that as B says, that loop that she's on going round and round and round that we can be in that kind of constant loop of talk that's going on in our heads is a trance that we're in. And actually what this pause does is wakes us up, mm -hmm. wakes us up for a moment out of the trance to go, oh, oh, actually what, what's really going on? What, what do I want here? And I think that's really helpful. I think it's this pause is also super helpful when it comes to conflict. And mm -hmm. that can be any conflict in your life. But how quick are we to get into arguments? And certainly around this when tension and, and you know emotions are so kind of tense is that we can, you know, they say something, we respond, they say something, we respond and it, boom, there it is out of control what if we took a pause and I know subconscious I didn't know that that's what I was doing but there were certainly times when B was ill that I instinctively knew to take a pause um, with whatever was going on for B I knew I needed there was something in me that knew don't launch in don't say what you want to say right now take a take a breath take a pause and see what needs to happen next. Yeah, yeah. So you're so right because how many times have you had arguments or conversation, usually arguments, where that you've had probably a thousand times before, almost verbatim, <laughs> and it's like you're not actually arguing with each other. You're just kind of re um, uh, rehashing or just kind of repeating what you've both said before. And it's like, you're not even interacting. It's just these two people having this um, kind of broken dialogue almost. And the, yeah, the pause can be so helpful then because it's like, well, what, it, what would happen if I actually, I didn't say what I normally say in this situation? 
and what ha what would happen if I didn't say anything or I just listened yeah. like listening in in conversations and particularly arguments can be really hard because we're so desperate to defend ourselves or get our point across that yeah we don't we don't listen we've just got this kind of rehearsed narrative in our head that we just want to get out as quickly as possible but funnily enough the other person wants to do the same thing so it's just like these words kind of firing at each other and just completely missing <laughs> the other person because we're in our own little bubbles but actually it only takes one person to interrupt that so actually yeah I wonder what that would look like and I've tried it a few times and it's just really interesting because the other person picks up on it straight away they're like what are you doing <laughs> they're not playing so the game anymore <laughs> yeah exactly it's not playing the game and it's 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 like thinking about it with with arguments and conflict like we have this conflict with our minds mm -hmm. as well so actually like I have back and forth with the inner critic that's in my head and it's like they'll say something horrible and I will try and kind of reason with it and be like yeah but look at this evidence of when I've done this thing in the past and then they'll just hurl something back and I'll try and bat it away again and it will just be this losing battle because our minds always have this kind of infinite back catalogue of, of um, comebacks they're always going to lose so why don't we interrupt it why don't we just not play and take that pause before we get sucked in because once we're in an argument once we're in this kind of autopilot back and forth it can be really hard to pull ourselves out because We've done it so many times we know how it ends <laughs> and so we're just kind of i don't know just sucked into it yeah. um so yeah i think i think taking a pause in that instance can be so powerful um and you might be thinking but how do i remember to do that <laughs> and it's it's a good question like sometimes we don't we don't remember to do that I think practice helps, but I think it's the point that I made a minute ago about tuning into our feelings. If we're having an argument with the inner critic in our head or the eating disorder voice, and we're feeling those, those horrible spiky feelings, then it's, it's probably time for a pause or a time out because whatever's going on upstairs is isn't productive it's not helpful it doesn't feel warm so actually just taking that pause and just see what happens it's almost like playing with the playing with the pause playing with the silence and and seeing what your your gut and your heart say when you when you give them space to to kind of rise up and almost fill that space yeah i think that's wonderful and i think there's so much so much in that for us to just play with i think um and again as b said you know when you knowing when to do it or reminding ourselves to do it is to when we it's when we remember then that's a good enough time to go, oh, yeah, that would have been helpful to have a pause there. Without judgment, being kind to yourself, not adding that as another thing on the to-do list, but actually just when you remember to do it. Um, so yeah, lots to play with there. Yeah. So let us know how you get on, leave comments, and um, yeah, we're intrigued to, to see what happens. Um, but feel free to subscribe. A new video comes out every Monday. Um, so we will see you in the next one.